Hi guys, today I'm going to make a video showing you how to read labels properly and what to look for in your food to determine if it's good or not. Also, I'm going to show you how sugar can add up really quickly if you are not paying attention to it. And this of course affects diabetes um, big time because while you're trying to lower your fat intake to stop your insulin resistance, um, you still need to pay attention to your sugars. Once your insulin resistance is gone and your body is properly handling sugars, it's not so detrimental to your health, but it still is highly addictive. So in case you didn't know, um, for every four grams are, that are listed on a box, it's actually one teaspoon of sugar. So we're gonna go through what a typical person might eat in a day. These are things I didn't have a lot around my house because <laughs> I do have two teenagers, but like I try to feed them better than what they would want me to. So this is what I could find. So in the morning, they would have waffles because I don't do sugared cereals. So in these waffles, um, this would be more of a vegetarian life. So the waffles have three grams, so we're almost at a teaspoon. And I grabbed a cup of regular milk. Um, this is actually from my nutrition site. This one has 11 grams of sugar in just this. So if you divide that by four, you're looking at almost three teaspoons of sugar in here. And then for a snack, protein bar. So this one had six grams of sugar in it. Then for lunch, you might have like SpaghettiOs, type of spaghetti rings. And this has nine grams of sugar um, if you only eat half. So there's 18 in here <laughs> divided by four. And then that wasn't enough to hold you over because I mean, that's just not. So you're gonna have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So normal jelly is partial fruit. However, because the fruit is a minimal part of it, it really can't count as a fruit sugar, which is totally opposite um, to your body than refined sugar. Fruit sugar has the nutrients and the fiber and all of the other things that come along with it together. So if you were to take strawberries, mash them up, and put them on bread, that would be different than if you were to grab this. Because this right here has strawberries as the first ingredient, that's good. But it also has high fructose corn syrup, then corn syrup, then sugar on top of that. And then, so this right here for one tablespoon, which you probably would do at least two, you're looking at 10 grams of sugar. So 20 divided by four is five teaspoons just on your little sandwich. Almond butter. I use this occasionally with real apples if I want a snack because I can't do bread. This one also has cane sugar in it because it's cheaper and I barely even eat any kind of peanut butter because I can't do peanuts well. So this one right here only has two grams for two tablespoons. So that's like a half a teaspoon. And then moving on to bread. Now all of these products or most of them, I get at Aldi's. This um, for one slice of bread has two, so if you're making a sandwich, you're gonna have a teaspoon of sugar just in your bread alone. And then for dinner, you're gonna be healthy and you're gonna make zoodles. So you've got your zucchini, you spiralize it, and you pour on some of this tomato, onion, and garlic, because it's so good, and it's easy, and it's convenient. But for a half a cup, which is this much, and that's not what normal people put on their pasta. They usually put a cup of pasta, um, of sauce. So I mean, yeah, if you're covering zoodles, you can even do two or three zucchinis. However, a half a cup has eight grams of sugar in it because this particular brand um, has sugar. So in a typical day, you've just consumed about a quarter cup of sugar in just that so that's how quickly it can add up and in a typical day I could eat this all in one meal and a lot of Americans do and so 
that adds up quickly and so does fat. So let me show you, and I don't know, I didn't look at these pre-done. So this one right here says 70 calories, and then it has 1.5 grams of fat. So what I don't like about this is it doesn't give you calorie, fat calories, which is a good way to find out you know, if something is decently healthy. So if you only have 1.5 grams versus 70 calories, I would say the fat in this is pretty insignificant. But if you're watching your fats like you're doing an 80-10-10, it adds up quickly, again, just like the sugar does. So this nutrition label, I'm gonna see if I can get these. Okay, so there you go, and it's backwards to me, so that means I can't read it. Okay, so right here, calories 160, fat calories is 150, which means out of those 160, 150 of it is fat. So this product is pretty much fat, which we all know nuts are fat. They're a healthy fat, but not when you start adding sugar in them and starting getting them processed. If you want to just eat a nut, that's different. <clears throat> Of course this probably yeah it has no fat because it's all sugar so why would it be fat plus fat sugar combo um, and salt in here sodium 65 no salt in that thank goodness salt in this is 470 for a half a cup no salt in this your protein bar <clears throat> So here you go, here's the food label. Calories, 190, calories from fat, 90, which means pretty much half of it is fat. Now the reason why is because obviously this is a peanut butter um, and chocolate bar, but when you start looking at the sodium, it's also 170. So you've got fat, sugar, salt, which are the evil three combos that keep you addicted to food. Food addict. I can eat these all day long. Spaghetti rings, you've only got five calories versus 150 calories. So this is a very decent choice if you are watching your fat. It's not so decent if you're watching your sodium because for the entire can, it's half your daily recommend, or for a whole can, this is half your daily recommended amount of sodium, the whole day. So you can't eat salt at all, the whole rest of the day. Like that's how bad these things are. That's why you want to stay away from processed food. Um, the whole wheat bread has, for one slice, 125 milligrams of sodium, um, but it's very good on fat and it's very good on sugar. So here you're getting salt, but not fat and not sugar. When you start adding all these things together, I mean, the waffles, you've got 350 milligrams of sodium, and out of 140 calories, 25 of them are fat. So, and eh, on the fat. It's important when you start transitioning over to plant-based that you really look at your labels. Pay attention to how many ingredients are in there. If you look at this peanut butter here, um, you know, do you want the oil? Do you want the sugar? Because they've added oil to this. They've added palm oil, and they've added sugar, and they've added salt. So your three evil combos in this, which is why I don't really eat this, I eat this maybe once a month if I'm really needing some fats in my diet. Things like this, the transition foods, just mayo. This is basically oil because mayonnaise is oil and eggs. So what they've done is they take out the eggs because it needs to be vegan and they've put in oil, more oil. So out of 60 calories for one tablespoon, 50 of them are fat. They also have 95 gram, milligrams of sodium in one tablespoon, but no sugar. But if you look at things like this, let me see if I can, I know it's like right here in front. That is a list of ingredients that I would not want in my body. I buy this because my husband likes mayo and I'm trying to convert him over. But we eat this maybe once or twice a month and I don't eat it at all because I can't handle this much oil. Um, when you start getting to things that you can't pronounce, that's a sign to get rid of that food. You want fiber ingredients or less that you can pronounce and know exactly what they are. So, because this one has oil in it, but the ingredients are tomato puree, which is water and tomato paste, 
diced tomatoes in tomato juice, onions, sugar, vegetable oil, which is either, they've got a list of three or four, and then they have 1% less of salt, garlic, onion, spice, dehydrated parsley, citric acid, and natural flavor. Natural flavor means preservatives. If you get migraines a lot, that might be why. So it's just looking at those labels, finding ingredients um, on your bread or whatever that's five or less um, that you can pronounce. That's why if people want bread, I suggest the Ezekiel bread. You can find it. I know at Kroger in the frozen section, but I'm not sure where it is now that they're all redoing their stores. It used to be in the natural section, and I have no idea now. Um, so Ezekiel bread, you can pronounce everything in it. it it's very good for you. Um, it has a lot of like bean and gra whole grains in it. Um, regular bread, not so much. Um, transition to foods that don't have a lot of sugar in them, that don't have a lot of oil, and don't have a lot of salt. So it's gonna be hard at the beginning, but that's how you start cleaning up your environment, is you'll buy the processed food, and then maybe you won't. The Beyond Burger is not what I call a healthy burger, but when you are transitioning somebody, it might be a good burger for them. Let me find, okay. So here is why it is unhealthy. I don't know if you can read the ingredients, but they're right there. It's not focusing very well. I hope you can see that. If I'll look later. Water, pea protein isolate. Do you know what that is? I don't know what that is. They've isolated pea protein. Expeller pressed coconut or canola oil. I know what that is. Refined coconut oil. I know what that is. Cellulose from bamboo. That's fiber. Methyl cellulose. Potato starch, I know what that is. Natural flavor, mm -hmm, preservatives. Maltodextrin, corn, it's a corn derivative. Yeast extract, I don't do well with yeast. Salt, sunflower oil, vegetable glycerin, dried yeast, as if yeast extract wasn't enough. Gum arabic, citric, citrus extract, absorbic acid, beet juice extract, Acetic acid, succinic acid, and modified food starch and annatto. So they're vegan, they're soy free, they're gluten free, they're no GMO. These guys are not healthy. So if you eat these on a regular basis, you will not lose weight. They're fine for a treat once you hit maintenance or um, you're close to your goal weight like I'm a correct BMI now So I decided that when my husband gets home from his travels um, That we are going to celebrate with a burger and Then we probably won't eat them until next summer the nutritional breakdown. Let's see if you can see those all right calories 270 but from fat 170 of those are fat You've got your sodium 380 but no sugar so you decide what goes in your mouth, you decide what comes into your house, and ultimately you decide how clean you're gonna eat. But I just thought I would make this video so that you can kind of be more aware of looking for like maybe something that's 100 calories that would be 10 calories from fat or less so that you're in your 80, 10, 10 type of thing. Um, don't go like do your percentages, go through the aisles of the grocery store, use your calculator, calculate the percentage of fat, the percentage of sodium and stuff in things. Um, it'll say your recommended daily amount. So, you know, sodium, it's 16%. It's 31% of your total fat. If you're doing an 80, 10, 10, 31% is not okay. So just be careful, just be aware, just look for the healthier options. And of course, if it doesn't have a label like carrots or celery or lettuce <laughs> that's probably a really good thing all right guys until the next video thanks for watching please subscribe and like and have a blessed day